Will the good gentleman sponsor from Davao City continue to yield the floor on the spirit of interpolation? Mr. President, uh, gladly. Mr. President, before we proceed with the interpolation, we'd like to deliver a uh, short or long manifestation. Uh, Mr. President, uh, just for the record, I believe and agree that the policy issue of uh, devolution of health services is a matter that we should discuss as uh, policymakers extensively. It has been a challenge long before this pandemic even began. This is one of the reasons why we struggled and uh, continue to struggle to cope uh, with this uh, health uh, crisis. Nabigla tayo dahil hindi talaga handa ang healthcare system natin para sa ganitong klaseng pandemya. At dahil sa loob ng ilang dekada, hindi tayo namuhunan sa sektor ng uh, kalusugan. Now we are feeling the consequences of decades of uh, inaction. I am fully aware of the Supreme Court ruling on the Mandanas uh, case and its uh, implications on the tax allocation for both the national government and the local uh, government units. Having said this, uh, Mr. President, I also believe that uh, the bills we are discussing today uh, take precedence over these policy concerns because we should uh, remember we are still in a public uh, health uh, emergency. We are in a health uh, crisis. The national government should step in now. We should not just wait for and rely on local government units to take the cudgels. Uh, how can we expect them to take the reins, Mr. President, when they are already coming to us uh, for aid? Nagmamakaawa talaga. Uh, in fact, last year, the national government had to assist uh, LGUs by uh, providing all cities and municipalities a financial subsidy equivalent to their one-month uh, era and all provinces equivalent to half-month era. This uh, was to help the LGUs to respond if, uh, more effectively than to the needs of their constituents and help the national government implement measures to overcome the COVID-19 uh, crisis. In fact, uh, nakuha po ito sa Bayanihan uh, 1 yung tulong po. Sa tulong po ng Kongreso at ng uh, Senado, nakapagbigay po tayo sa LGUs dahil talagang uh, kulang na kulang at nabigla ang ating mga LGUs. Wala silang pagkukunan. Yung iba sa kanila, tinamaan ng bagyo. Yung iba sa kanila, tinamaan po ng uh, lindol. Eh, nung panahon na tumama itong uh, COVID-19 na uh, pandemic, ubos na po ang kanilang uh, pera. Yung kanilang uh, disaster fund, yung mandatory uh, 5% uh, disaster fund ay ubos na po nung panahon ng pandemya noong Marso. At uh, uh, pinayagan naman po silang gamitin yung pera Ang iba po ay binili nila ng pagkain, lalong-lalo na po sa mga mahihirap natin kababayan. Ang iba naman po ay binili po nila ng uh, gamot. Iba naman po ay mga PPEs. Yung mga panahon na yon na hindi pa natin alam na paano po ito uh, supuin itong uh, COVID-19. Dahil yung mga hospital noon, hindi ka po makakapasok sa mga hospital kung hindi ka po wala kang uh, suot na PPEs. So talagang uh, ubos. Bangkarote po yung uh, pera po ng ating mga LGUs all, all over the country. At uh, totoo naman po yun, malaking tulong po yung one-month uh, subsidy na ira na binigay po natin sa ating mga LGUs. And uh, let me make it clear that I am defending bills that can be classified into uh, four categories. Number one, the five bills uh, for the upgrading of DOH hospitals funding of which will, of course, come from the national uh, government. And, uh, number two, the four bills, four plus one, I mean four bills for upgrading of LGU hospitals and one establishing an LGU hospital, funding for these bills will be shouldered by the respective local government units with subsidy for capital outlay from the national uh, government. Number three, the three bills establishing new DOH hospitals funded by the national government. And number four, ito po yung uh, uh, renationalization po ng uh, dalawang hospital 
two bills uh, renationalizing or transferring the supervision and control of two hospitals from their LGUs to the national government. Funding for these hospitals will be transferred to the national government after the transition uh, period. For the bills of uh, for renationalization of hospitals, Mr. President, I am uh, willing to set aside uh, for now and await the direction of the executive on the implementation of the Mandanas uh, ruling. Hindi naman po natin alam kung ano po yung magiging priority po ng ating executive. Wala pa naman po yung executive order. Kung ano po yung uh, paggagamitan po ng ating mga local government units, hindi naman po natin alam kung isa ba isa. ang health sa magiging priority nila. Pwede naman nila itong gawing infrastructure at iba-iba pang uh, basic services na pwede nilang paggagamitan. So, nasa kalagitnaan pa po tayo at well, hindi pa man, hindi pa nasa sumite ang uh, budget dito sa atin ng uh, executive and even the local government units uh, by now, nasa Mayo pa po tayo hindi rin natin alam kung part ba ng priority itong uh, uh, pagpapatayo ng hospital sa kanilang magiging budget po on the local uh, level for the bills, uh, but you know Mr. President for me, kung hindi na kaya ng LGU ngayon uh, dapat uh, pa rin natin silang uh, tulungan ngayon. Hindi uh, ko naman po ito ipagpipilitan sa ngayon. Ang Benguet General Hospital, 3 years na pong uh, nag-operating at a loss. Habang ang Lanao del Norte nag-operate ng 5 other uh, LGU hospitals at nagsabi ng kailangan nila ng assistance dahil hindi na nila kakayanin ang uh, upgrade. These hospitals not only kit uh, these hospitals cater not only on the population in their own areas but also to nearby provinces and cities. Unfair naman po ang provincial government ng Benguet at Lanao del Norte ang sasagot sa buong gastusin ng hospital kung merong mga taga ibang probinsya na doon namang nagpapagamot. Paano na po yung mga pasyente? Sino ang tutulong sa kanila? saan sila pupunta at maantala at matatagalan kung hindi natin sila tutulungan. Halimbawa lang po, Mr. President, yung mga na admitted po sa Benguet uh, Hospital, some are from as far as uh, mountain, mountain province, ang iba po ay nanggagaling sa Ilocos, yung nanggagaling naman po yung iba sa Ifugao. Yung mga na taga Benguet, Siguradong babayaran po ito ng uh, tutulong po yung kongresista nila, yung gobernor nila o yung mayor po nila. E hindi naman po pwedeng tanggihan ng mga hospital yung mga pasyente yung naghihingalo. Bawal po yun. Ang problema po dito, Mr. President, paglabas na po nila sa, sa hospital, sino pong tutulong sa kanila? Iba naman po, hindi pwedeng uh, gamitin yung pera ng Benguet sa hindi residente ng uh, Benguet at nangyayari po yan sa iba't ibang parte ng, uh, ng ating bansa, sa iba't ibang hospital. Saan po sila hihingi ng uh, tulong? Saan po sila hihingi ng uh, saklolo at uh, sino pong tutulong sa kanila para makalabas po sila sa, sa hospital? But... Uh, I will uh, forego them for now while we are waiting the policy direction of the executive department so that we can focus on the other uh, 13 uh, measures. Perhaps in the meantime, we can provide support for these hospitals through a subsidy in the 2022 budget. Uh, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, baka po uh, patulungan nyo kami dito. Uh, Habang uh, naghihintay tayo na ano ang pulisiya para maimplementa ang Mandanas ruling, yun po ang problema natin dito. Hayaan lang ba natin na naghihingalo po ang ating mga kababayan, mga pasyente. Minsan po ay uh, nandyan lang po sa labas ng uh, koridor ng hospital, mamakawa at wala pong uh, matakbuhan. 
hindi dapat maantala ang operasyon ng mga ospital nito, lalong-lalo na po ngayon, nasa kalagitnaan pa po tayo ng pandemya. Iba po ang uh, sitwasyon ngayon, uh, Mr. President. Ako po mismo, alos sa uh, lahat po, eh, pupunta ako sa mga ospital. Sa corridor dyan, magkakatabi yung mga pasyente. Paano po sila gagaling? Magkakatabi dyan. Lalong-lalo na po ngayon na nasa COVID po tayo, kalagitnaan ng covid Alam naman natin hindi natin nakikita itong kalabang ito. So, tulungan na lang po natin sila, Mr. President. Tulungan na lang po natin ang ating kapwa Pilipino. Kawawang kawawa po talaga sila. At alam na alam ko po yun. Dahil halos linggo-linggo, halos araw-araw po akong bumababa sa mga kababayan nating uh, mahirap. Witness po ako dyan. Uh, I'm begging you po. Huwag niyo pong pabayaan ng ating mga kababayan, Mr. President. Mr. President, we need to pass uh, the bills upgrading the DOH hospitals because we are amending or repealing previous laws which set the specific bed capacities of the DOH hospitals. We need to pass these bills swiftly so that the funding for the upgrade can be included in the preparations of the 2022 national budget. Let me just enumerate the hospitals for the information of the body. Ito po yung sinabi kong uh, first five po na upgrading of DOH hospitals. Uh, number one, East Avenue Medical Center has a bed capacity rate of 161%, which is extremely above the national standard of 85%. The last upgrade of uh, Eastern East Avenue Medical Center was about 24 years ago through Republic Act number 8345, which increased the bed capacity of EAMC to 600 beds. Marami sa Metro Manila ay dito po nagpapagamot. Uh, At isa po ito sa mga hospital na napapabalita ng unang panahon pa po, unang buwan pa po ng COVID-19, na sinasabi nga nila yung mga bangkay ay nagpapatong-patong na po. Doon hindi naman natin makonfirma kung COVID cases po yun. So, ibig sabihin talaga, kulang na kulang po talaga ang hospital uh, beds. E kung nagkulang nga po yung lugar sa morgue, lalo-lalo na po yung mga hospital beds na alangan naman natin, kailangan-kailangan natin mga kababayan ko. 100, kung nababalitaan nga umaabot sa 100%, Nagpapanik na tayo. Nagpapanik na yung Pilipino. Nababalitaan natin sa news. Almost 100% na po ang utilization ng hospital beds. 90% na po. Malapit na pong mapuno. Nagpapanik na po tayong lahat at takot tayong hindi matulungan natin kababayan. Pero ito po, bed occupancy rate of 161%. Ibig sabihin, isang kama. Halos mag magdodoble po ang isang pasyente. Eh, ito naman po mga hospital naman ito. Para naman po ito sa mga mahihirap. Wala pong mga mahiyaman na nagpapa-admit dito. Ang mga mayayaman po nandun sa Makati Med, St. Luke's, Cardinal Santos. Wala pong nagpapa-admit na mayayaman dito sa mga hospital na ito. Number two, ito pong the Mayor Hilarion Ramiro Senior Medical Center in Misamis Occidental has an average bed occupancy rate of 375%. The last increase was in 2016, but clearly, hindi pa rin po ito sapat. The hospital serves not only Misamis Occidental, but also nearby provinces of Lanao del Norte, Lanao del Sur, Sambuanga del Norte, and Sambuanga del Sur. 375%, ibig sabihin po, Isang kama, apat na pasyente. Nasa COVID po tayo, Mr. President. Iba po ang uh, sitwasyon ngayon, Mr. President. Tulungan po natin ang ating mga kababayan. Number three, the third hospital itong Shistosomiasis Control and Research Hospital Rich. An average bed occupancy rate of 409%. Percent. Mr. President, galing po ako doon mismo nung nakarambuan. Kitang-kita ko po yung hospital. Kitang-kita ko po yung mga pasyente. 
nakahilera po sa labas ng hospital. Yung iba po, bit-bit pa nila yung mga bata, yung mga pasyente nila. Humihingi po ng tulong kababayan ko. Ako mismo pumunta ron. This host, nagbukas po tayo ng malasakit center doon. This hospital was established by virtue of presidential decree number 1065 in 1975. Matagal na po. Nararapat lang po na i-upgrade na natin ang batas na ito dahil sa taas ng bed occupancy rate Imbis na gumaling ang pasyente, doon pa po sila nagkakahawaan. Number four, the Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center, another DOH-run hospital in Tacloban City, is at 158.96 bed occupancy rate. The, late, the last upgrade was 12 years ago. Number five, the Medina Extension Hospital has been under the administrative supervision and control of the Northern Mindanao Medical Center since 2009 and has been operating through funding from the DOH. This bill will ensure funding and recognize the supervision and control of the DOH over the hospital. Yun po yung lima, Mr. President. <coughs> Sir President, the implementation... Uh, of uh, this will be in phases so it would not be too burdensome in the first year. Wala rin naman sigurong problema kung magdadagdag tayo ng medical personnel sa mga hospital nito. Ngayon nga, nagkakaroon tayo ng emergency hiring. Ako po, may kakilala ako mga doktor. Bata pa, sumusurrender na po. Dahil takot po sila sa COVID-19. Mas, mas maigtingan pa po natin ang ating uh, hiring po. Hindi na po issue yung pera dito. Ang issue po dito, buhay po ang bawat Pilipino, buhay po ng mga mahirap. Ginagawa na rin natin ang paraan para madagdagan po ang pool of uh, professional health workers natin. Marami na nga mga health workers natin na sumusuko dahil talagang pagod na pagod na po sila. They have been at the forefront of this battle since last year. Just recently, I successfully appealed for the vaccination of professional regulation commission personnel so that they can conduct board examinations, particularly for nursing graduates, as soon as possible. Dahil napospon po yung examination nila, nakiusap po tayo na bakunahan po yung mga PRC para po makapag-resume na po sila ng pag-i-examin para maging full-pledged na po itong mga medical workers, including nurses, at makatulong na po sila sa ating mga hospitals. Mr. President, for the bills upgrading LG hospitals, the national, ito po yung lima, the national government would, would only support in terms of capital outlay. Mr. President, the municipal, municipality of Rizal, Palawan, is a far-flung municipality that needs our support It is a marginalized and disadvantaged area, kaya sana po wag po nating ipagdamot kung ano pong kaya nating itulong ng national government. Number two, the Nagilian District Hospital has an average bed occupancy rate of 141%. Number three, for Rosario District Hospital, the bed occupancy rate already reached 120%. Number four, another one is Sinait District Hospital, which has a bed occupancy rate of 139%. Number five, we are also proposing to establish Bacolod City General Hospital so that we can prevent overcrowding in Corazon, Loxin, Montilibano Memorial Regional Hospital in Negros Occidental. Dito po nagpapagamot ang mga taga Bacolod uh, City. Napansin nyo po, halos lahat po ng mga hospital nito ay lampas po sa critical level. Hindi lang po critical, sobra-sobra na po, umaapaw na po. The LGUs are funding the operations of these hospitals, but they need support from the national government in terms of capital outlay such as infrastructure and equipment. Alam niyo po, Mr. President, halos kalahati ng budget ng probinsya ay napupunta sa pagpapatakbo ng mga hospital. Wala naman po siguro masama na magbigay ng tulong ang national government sa pag-upgrade ng mga hospital na ito. Mr. President, alam naman natin na nagtatayo tayo ngayon ng temporary or makeshift uh, hospitals 
tens modular hospitals funded by national government para lang madagdagan ang healthcare capacity natin. Itong mga hospital na ito for upgrade, nareyan na po ang structure. Kailangan lang dagdagan yung bed capacity. Kailangan lang po karagdagang kagamitan. Kailangan lang po i-improve natin yung hospital. Hindi lang po tayo ang makikinabang dito. Ang makikinabang po dito, yung mga anak at mga apo natin. At pinaka-importante po, yung mga mahihirap nating mga kababayan na wala pong matakbuhan, kundi itong mga public hospital na ito. In the same light, Mr. President, I am seeking your support for the bills establishing new DOH hospitals. Ito po yung tatlo. First, the Eastern Pangasinan Regional Medical and Trauma Center. The existing medical facility in Dagupan City is largely inaccessible to Pangasinenses residing in Eastern Pangasinan. People residing in Eastern Pangasinan have to travel long hours to receive emergency medical services. Hindi lang po dito, hindi lang po ito para sa mga taga Eastern Pangasinan. Para rin po ito sa mga taga Nueva Vizcaya, Nueva Ecija, Tarlac, at iba pang mga probinsya po. Napaka-unfair naman po sa Pangasinan, probinsya po ng local government ng Pangasinan, kung sila po ang gagastos para po sa hospital na ito. Another one, number two, the Dabao Occidental General Hospital. We, we need to establish uh, this uh, since residents from the province of Dabao Occidental with advanced medical conditions, we'll have, we'll have to travel approximately 201 kilometers to receive emergency health services. Baka po, patay na yung pasyente bago pa dumating doon sa Southern Philippines Medical Center sa Davao City. I've been there, alam ko po yun. Marami pong humihingi ng tulong sa amin sa Davao City na mga hindi residente ng Davao City. At marami pong bawal na gamitin po pas hindi residente ng Davao City. Yung pera po, na hindi po sa residente ng Davao City government. Kaya marami pong tumatakbo doon sa city government na humingi ng tulong as far as General Santos City, Surigao. Well, alam nila doon po yung kompleto na hospital at marami silang malalapitan tulong. DOH run hospital po yung Southern Philippines Medical Center. Kung meron na pong hospital sa Daba Occidental, maaari pong makasalbar man lang tayo ng buhay ng ating kapwa Pilipino. Also, 41% of the barangays in Daba Occidental are classified as geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. Talagang isolated po. Napakalayo po. Ang 2021 era ng Davao Occidental ay 1.06 billion para sa gastos ng pagpapatayo at pagpapatakbo po ng hospital, 897 million. Hindi naman po pwede yung gamitin ng Davao Occidental yung buong era nila na 1 billion para po dun sa hospital na almost 900 million. Wala na pong matitira sa kanila. The cost is almost at par with the era. Paano naman makakayanan ng LGU itatayo po ito? Kahit po sabihin natin na malaki ang allocation ng LGU dahil sa Mandanas ruling, ang 27.61% mandated increase sa Mandanas ruling po is just 1.35 billion po na magiging ira ng Dabao Occidental. For example lang po ito, Mr. President. So talagang kulang pa po. Dahil maaring marami pa pong priorities rin po ang Dabao Occidental. Isila pa yung prone ngayon sa, sa Lindol, Mr. President. Lastly, we have the Senate President Neptali Gonzalez General Hospital. At present, sa Mandaluyong po, there is no DOH hospital in Mandaluyong City for general health services. Ang meron lang po doon ay National Center for Mental Health at ang Mandaluyong City Medical Center that is not big enough to service the number of patients that seek aid in Mandaluyong. At marami pong makikinabang dito kapag naitayo na itong hospital nito, it will serve people from the cities of Mandaluyong, San Juan, and Makati. It can serve a population of about 2 million people. 
Ngunit unfair naman po sa Mandaluyong na sila ang sasagot sa gastusin para sa hospital na ito. Halimbawa naman po, from San Juan or from Makati, ang magpapagamot dito, in, in fact, mas uh, malaki po ang pondo ng Makati kaysa Mandaluyong. Hindi naman po siguro papayag yung uh, city government ng Mandaluyong na sila po ang sasagot ng health services ng lahat ng syudad na nakapalibot sa kanila. According to Republic Act uh, number 8344, bawal po tanggihan ang pasyente nang hindi nagbibigay ng emergency treatment. Kaya po, kahit sang residente ka, Mr. President, dapat kang bigyan ng lunas ng hospital. Ang proble problema po nito, sinong magbabayad ng hospital bill, paglalabas na po ang uh, pasyente. Yun po ang magiging uh, problema natin dito. Kung hindi po sakop dun sa lugar na yon, yung pasyente na admitted po dun sa local uh, hospital na po yun. Wala pong uh, sasalo. At kahit saan na lang po hihingi ng tulong yung mga kababayan natin at nagmamakaawa po. It is also important to note that although the allocation of each LGU will increase in accordance with the Mandanas ruling, we are unsure LGUs will have sufficient increase to add funding for health or if they will even prioritize health services. Kahit, sa, kahit natataas ang kanilang ira, we have no earmarking or control how much uh, will be allocated for health. Hindi naman po natin alam kung ano po talaga ang priorities rin po ng ating mga LGUs po sa ngayon. And I also want to reiterate, Mr. President, ang mga modular, modular hospitals funded by the national government na itinatayo natin ngayon, temporary po ito, bagamat na, nasabi na rin po ni uh, Senator Cynthia Villar na sila po, yung kanilang modular hospital, hindi nila sisirain po ito, Itong temporary hospital na ito, naghahabulan po tayo ngayon, Mr. President. Dahil ayaw po natin bumagsak ang ating uh, healthcare system. Ngayon, Mr. President, hindi dito na po yung pagkakataon, hindi dito na po yung bills, hindi dito na rin po yung funding. Manggagaling man po sa national o manggagaling man po sa lokal yung pera. Ang importante po dito, Mr. President, buhay po ng bawat Pilipino. Ang nakataya dito, Mr. President. We have the opportunity to do that today, Mr. President. Itong mga hospital na gusto nating itayo, permanenteng pasilidad na po ito. Nandiyan okay. na po ang plano, may pondo na po. Sabi ng DBM, suportado po ito ng DOH. Pasado na ito sa lower house. Sana po ay tulungan na lang po natin sila, Mr. President. Habang kailangan pa nating pag-aralan yung uh, pulisiya po dahil po sa Mandanas ruling. Ulitin ko lang po, nasa health emergency po tayo. Bakit uh, hirap tayong uh, isa, ipasa po ito sa Senado? Nagpaplano nga po tayo ng Bayanihan 3. Maghahanap ng pondo para sa mga temporary facilities. Ito naman po ay permanente na po at makikinabang po ang ating mga anak at apo at mga kapatid nating mahirap. We have passed 11 hospitals, hospital laws already this Congress. I believe that uh, last Congress, there were more than 30 laws passed concerning hospitals. Uh, sana po matuto tayo sa karanasan natin sa pandemyang uh, ito. Iba po talaga ang sitwasyon na... Uh, Ayun, nasa kalagitnaan pa po tayo ng uh, pandemya at hindi po natin alam kung kailan po matapos itong pandemyang ito. Mr. President, we are all uh, raising uh, issues on funding and devolution when uh, we are in the middle of the health crisis. Kung pwede lang po sana, uh, Mr. President, Tulungan nyo na lang po may pasa ito. Let me repeat. Gagawa tayo ng mga hospital dahil walang saksalo na LGU. We cannot uh, force LGUs to fund it kung hindi nila kaya. Kung minsan, mas malaki pa ang gastos sa pagpapatayo ng hospital kays kaysa ira po ng ibang LGUs. The national government must step in because our people need us to. Kitang-kita naman po sa pandemyang ito na kulang na kulang talaga ang mga hospital natin. 
if LGUs cannot and the national government will not assist them, sino pong tutulong sa mga kababayan nating Pilipino? Papabayaan na lang ba natin sila? Mag maghintayan na lang ba tayo kung sino magtatayo ng mga hospital habang libo-libo na po ang namamatay dahil sa COVID-19? As of today, more than 20,000 na po ang namamatay dahil sa COVID-19. This should not be an uh, issue of funding sa ngayon. Ang importante, merong matakbuhan ng Pilipino kaysa mapunta. Ulitin ko, kaysa po mapunta sa korupsyon. Gamitin na lang po natin ang pera ng gobyerno. Maging national, maging lokal para po sa mga mahirap nating kababayan na nangangailangan po ng tulong. I am not appealing to pity. I am stating the reality. Ano po ang realidad nasa baba? Ramdam ko po ang hirap ng tao. Ramdam ko po ang hirap ng Pilipino. Mr. President, uh, this is the time that we need to spend for healthcare. Now more than ever, we should start now. We should learn from this pandemic in order to prepare for future ones. I know that the Minority leader, sir, and I, and all of us just want to help our country. Magtulungan na lang po tayo para sa Pilipino. Ito mga hospital na ito, para ito sa mga anak natin, sa mga apo. Nasa kamay na po natin ang kinabukasan na masisiguro na handa tayo sa mga susunod na pandemyang maaring dumating sa buhay natin. Sana po isuporta natin ito. Let us make life more comfortable for our fellow Filipinos. I am, a, I am not a lawyer, Mr. President, but I have heard it said, Salus Populi es Suprema Lex. The welfare of the people is the supreme law. What should guide us not only in today's deliberations, but in all of our endeavors is what is best for our people. Kapag inuna mo po, ang kapakanan ng iyong kapwa at minahal mo ang iyong kapwa Pilipino. Hindi hindi ka po magkakamali. Mr. President, uh, I'm now open to uh, interpolation. Mr. President? Uh, yes, uh, Senator Binay. With the permission of the minority floor leader. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes. Okay. I, would, I would just like to spread into the record kasi nabanggit ko kanina by um, the sponsor about Makati. Um, I would just like to correct his statement. Kami ho dito sa Makati, we have our own local hospital. I don't think ho, eh, makikigamit kami ng hospital ng Mandaluyo. Uh, baka it would be the other way around, uh, Mr. President. Yun lang po. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Ang binanggit ko po kanina, Mr. President, na uh, meron pong Halimbawa po na merong mga pasyente na malapit sila doon sa, sa Mandaluyong, eh, mga residente po ng San Juan or ng uh, uh, Makati, hindi naman po yan tatanggihan ng hospital. Ng, uh, halimbawa, operated po ito ng uh, Mandaluyong local uh, government. Ang uh, problema po dyan ay kung sino po nga uh, sasalo sa kanilang mga hospital uh, bills po pagdating ng panahon. At alam naman po natin ang Makati ay suportado po talaga ang kanilang mga pasyente. Ang problema po dyan, pag nagkataon po, mas malapit sila doon sa uh, hospital na tatayuan po sa Mandaluyong. Hindi naman po siguro lilipat yon pag talagang emergency cases, Mr. President. All right. Um, the minority leader? <coughs> Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, as you can attest, uh, Mr. President, I made a telephone call to your honor at about noon time today, or early, or, or, and what did I tell the good Senate President? I said, I have found a solution to this problem of funding of these local hospitals, and uh, I am willing uh, and I will suggest this, uh, and I will propound it during the uh, this, af this afternoon session, and uh, we should be able to finish 
this uh, debate uh, today. Uh, I think I can, uh, I, I can uh, that ha that uh, uh, telephone conversation, the, the good Senate President can attest to. However, Mr. President, I am surprised <laughs> that uh, as we open our session today, I hear an almost an hour of a sponsorship speech in the middle of the period of interpretation. Most unusual. But Mr. President, that compels me also to make a manifestation to set the records straight. Mr. President. Well, before you do I that, uh, allow me to yes. place on record first that, uh, yes, I confirm the telephone conversation uh, made uh, between uh, the minority leader and the uh, uh, and yours truly. Um, and that um, you, you have made manifestations uh, to um, uh, uh, perhaps uh, shorten, if not terminate, the period of interpolation, and we have found a solution um, by way of uh, proposed amendments, especially to the issue of funding in the 13 bills. Um, and uh, possibly later on, uh, we can discuss further the renationalization bills. But later on, yes, I, I indeed, I, I, as, as a matter of fact, I I um, informed the majority leader of such, and I also informed uh, Senator Bongo of the uh, conversation with the minority leader. I confirmed that. You may now continue with the manifestation, um, uh, Senator Dillo, minority leader. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind uh, response, uh, Mr. President. Yes, as I said, I want, I, I am compelled to make this manifestation, which will delay again the deliberations of this bill, because of the very clear implication of the statements of uh, the good sponsor. Uh, again, uh, 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 appealing to emotion, but at the same time, uh, criticizing uh, the, uh, the, the Senate or this representation for causing delay. And I refer to the previous session, wherein uh, the um, uh, good sponsor said, uh, Bakit yung papa pinapatagal itong <laughs> pag-approval itong bills na ito? Mr. President, because of this statement, I examined the records, and to my surprise, I found out that these measures we have been debating on have been pending in the Senate for 15 months. Labing limang buwan po nakatenga sa Senado dahil po hindi ginagalaw ng kumite itong mga panukalang batas na magdadagdag ng hospital beds sa ating mga hospital. Halimbawa po, Ginoong Pangulo, House Bill 2582 or the bill increasing the bed capacity of the lying-in clinic in Rizal, Palawan. This was referred to the Committee on Health on January 20, 2020. It was after 10 months that the committee conducted its first hearing. Sampung buwan po na inupuan ng kumite bago po uh, tumawag ng committee hearing. At hindi lang po yan, lumagpas a anim na buwan po ang dumaan bago po in-sponsor itong panukalang batas noong uh, Mayo at 17 itong kanakaraan taon. Kawawa naman po ang nakatira sa Rizal Palawan. Naghintay po sila ng labing limang buwan. Hindi po dahilan sa ating uh, pagtatanong kung hindi dahilan po ito po hindi inaksyonan ng kumite. House Bill 5870 or the bill establishing the Neptali Gonzalez General Hospital was referred to the health to the Committee on Health on January 29, 2020. It was heard in committee uh, hearing on February 12 2020, noong February 15 lamang po nitong taong ito gumawa ng committee report at in-sponsor noong nakaraang linggo, May 17, 2021. <clears throat> Hindi lang po yan. Yung pong House Bill 
6498. It was referred to the Committee on Health on May 15, 2020. Kailan po ang committee report? Halos po isang taon. February 15, 2020. Kailan po in-sponsor sa Senado? May 17, 2021. May git po uh, halos uh, isa, isang taon. Isang taon bago po sponsor sa Senado. Doon po sa Rosario, Pangasinan, in-refer po ito sa, Sina sa Committee on Health Julio 29, taong 2020. Kailan po sinabit ang committee report? February 15, 2021. Kailan po in-sponsor? Last week. And so forth and so on. We would like to place a record that all these bills have been pending in the Senate and in the committee since last year, but were reported out only last week. Bakit po inabot ng labing limang buwan bago po dalhin sa plenaryo? Kaya po ako, kaya po gusto kong liwanagin. Hindi po dahilan sa uh, ating pagtatanong na natatagalan po. Minsan lang po ako nagtanong last week. Ngunit sa komite po ay mahigit sa labing limang buwan na nakabil, nakatenga. Kung tayo po ay concerned sa buhay ng ating mga kababayan, eh dapat po noon kaagad, isang taong nakalipas, ay dapat nagawa na natin ito. Alam po natin na kung tayo po ay nagtatanong dito sa Senado, ito po'y para maliwanagan ang ng ating mga kababayan. Kasama po ito sa araw-araw nating buhay sa Senado. Ito po ang kailangan nating gawin, magtanong. Dahilan po ang pera ng taong bayan, ang ating pinag-aalagaan, ang, ang mga gawa ng batas, ang ating trabaho. All my colleagues here know that I interpre interpolate on different measures, whether big or small, especially when there are relevant legal or policy issues that must be resolved or where there are effects on the economy or where budgetary locations are being uh, presented. Kahit po holiday po, bills, nagtatanong ako, bakit po? Dahil malaki ang epekto po dito sa ating ekonomiya at nawawalan po ng sahod ang ating mga, 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 mga manggagawa na arawan ang bayad. Kahit po conversion na isang maliit na paralan, nagtatanong po ako. Dahilan po ito po'y pera ng taong bayan na ating uh, 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 tinitingnan. Mr. President, this is the job of the minority leader. I will be remiss in my duties as minority leader kung hindi po tayo magtatanong. Mali naman siguro na yes sir, yes ma'am na lang ang ating sistema sa Senado. Tayo po ang mananagot sa taong bayan kung may maling batas na lumusot sa Kongreso. Aaminin ko po sa inyo, kahit matagal na tayo sa Senado, ay para pa rin pong estudyante si Senator Drillon na ginagabi sa pag-aaral ng mga batas. That is how I respect the institution and my colleagues. Alam ko po na oras, dugo at pawis ang inalalaan ng bawat author at sponsor ng batas. Kaya naman, we devote time and effort to study all measures that go through this chamber as, a, as our respect to the author to the sponsor and the institution. Having said that, Mr. President, we have been interpolating on these bills not to impede their passage, but to settle policy questions in the light of the very significant effect of the Mandana's ruling on our budget. Uh, in fact, the DBM has recognized this and they declared 
that the government must fully devolve the functions which have been devolved under the local government code. Kung sa ating tingin bilang mga mambabatas ay hindi po pwedeng i-devolve, ay di po palitan natin ang batas. Ngunit habang may batas, susundin po tayo. Mr. President, the Committee on Health, chaired by the good sponsor, conducted a hearing on the hospital bills while the budget hearings for the 2021 General Appropriations Act were ongoing. During the hearing, it was confirmed by the DOH Secretary, Undersecretary David, through the questioning of Senator Binay, that there is no allocation in the budget for the hospital bills and the funding of these measures are to be included in the 2021 budget. It was not included in the 2021 budget dahil po hindi inaksyonan ng komite ang mga panukalang batas na siyang magdadagdag ng hospital beds, na siyang magtutulong dito sa mga hospital na ito. Ang may pagkukulang po, hindi ang Senado, kung hindi ang komite. Uulitin ko lang po. Ang sabi ng, 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 ng uh, Department of, of Health, wala pong, wala pong alokasyon, walang budget, ang mga hospital bills at ang mga funding nito ay isasama sa 2021 budget. Walang pundo po dahil naghihintay na may pasa itong mga batas pagkatapos ay isasama sa 2021 budget. Ngunit dahil hindi po inaksyonan ng komite, hindi po naisama sa 2021 budget. Kaya po, nung nag-usap nag kami ni, ni Senate President, sinabi ko na pinag-aralan ko at nakapaghanap ako ng paraan kung paano mabigyan ng pera itong mga pangailangan ng hospital. Uh, Yusek David in that hearing said that the hospital bills must be passed to provide the mandate for the inclusion of the proposed budget for 2021. Ulitin ko lang po, it was emphasized by the Department of Health that these hospital bills must be passed in order uh, to provide the mandate for the inclusion in the DOH budget for 2021. The, the passage of the 2021 budget has come and gone, but the budget for, not, were, uh, for these hospitals were not included in the GAA. Why? Because the hospital bills were pending in the committee of uh, the health committee, notwithstanding the fact that it was almost over a, almost, uh, a year uh, that the uh, committee was uh, sitting on, the, uh, on, on, on these hospital bills. Let me quote uh, from the uh, transcript uh, during the uh, deliberations in the budget of the De Department of Health. Senator Binay, and I quote, Senator Binay, Gusto ko lang sanang malaman kung may alokasyon ang DOH para doon sa, sa i-approve natin today na mga increase in bed capacity. And if kung wala, baka during the period of amendment, we could already include allocation para mapunduhan naman itong increase in bed capacity. Ms. David, yes, Mr. Chair, this, this will still have to be we included po in the 2021 budget. Uh, uh, Senator Binay, so USEC at the moment, hindi pa si, siya kasama. Uh, uh, Ms. David, hindi pa po kasama dahil hindi pa, hindi pa siya approved. So there is no mandate to include it in the proposal. So once it is approved, it has to be included in the 2021 budget. End of quote. Mr. President, the committee had every opportunity to pass these measures before December or before we approve the 2021 budget last December of 2020 and therefore could have been included in the 2021 General Appropriations Act. Unfortunately, the committee sat on these bills. As confirmed from Senator Binay's exchange with Yusek David during the hearings, 
the bills are yet to be funded. Least I be accused again of delaying its passage. I am willing to terminate our interpolations today, Mr. President, as I committed to you during our conversation this noon time, and go to the period of amendment without prejudice to asking questions to enable us to craft specific amendments. Our amendments, which were born out of our questions during the interpolation, will specify the funding sources of, for, for the budgets of this hospital. I will repeat, by amendments which will born out of the questions during the, of the answers during the interpolation, will specify the bonding, so, uh, funding sources for the budgets of these hospitals. This has to be done, Mr. President. Otherwise, these bills will just become unfunded mandates. May batas mo tayo, pero walang tiyak na pundo na mapagkukunan noong pangailangan sa lapi para patakbuhin ito mga hospital na ito. Mr. President, ayoko pong paasahin ang ating mga kababayan na may batas para sa hospital, pero wala naman palang pundo. Yan po ang isang dahilan kung bakit tayo nagtatanong. Mr. President, we have grouped this hospital into uh, categories so that for easy, uh, uh, for easy uh, examination during the period of interpolations. First are the bills increasing the capacity of the DO, of the DOH hospital. We are of the opinion, Mr. President, that the Mandana's decision does not impact on these hospitals, which are already DOH hospitals. Hence, we have no amendments to this uh, 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 group of hospitals, and uh, uh, we, we, no, we no longer will have questions or amendments to these uh, bills. The second box would be increasing the bed capacity of the local hospitals with a provision which provides for a capital outlay uh, subsidy from the Department of Health. The bills charge maintenance and operating expenses to the LGU budget, but provides that the DOH secretary shall include the support for capital outlay to the charges, uh, to, char to the charges of the subsidy, uh, 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 to the subsidy program of the DOH. It is likely that the hospital, that the subsidy program refers to the health facilities enhancement program of the DOH. Dito po pagkukunan ng pundo, yung health facilities enhancement program, uh, enhancement program of the DOH. Support for capital outlays of hospitals is always under the eight the Health Facilities Enhancement Program. However, Mr. President, my dear colleagues, it must be recalled that the budget of the HFEP was drastically, drastically cut from the DOH regional proposal of 45 billion to only 7.8 billion in 2021. Kinakpo from 45 billion to 7.8 billion. The DBM explained that the budget was cut due to the slow implementation and the low disbursement of funds by the DOH. And therefore, with this reduced amount, we the, the, the funding for these hospitals cannot be guaranteed. The bills establishing hospitals under the DOH will require significant funding, and it is likely that the HFEP will be insufficient to fully fund these hospitals, especially that it was cut from about 45 billion to only about 7 billion. If indeed there are hospitals, and I accept that these hospitals need funding, the congressman and the, the representative of that hospital could have helped. And yet, we are aware that in a particular hospital, 
one of those enumerated, one of those 15 here. The uh, uh, ranking official in the department, in the House of Representatives, inserted, inserted in the budget 7.924 billion, 7 billion, 924 million as insertions, as pork barrel. And yet, not a single peso was devoted to the capital outlay of the hospital which he represents in this district. Tama po ba yan? Tama po ba yan? Ngayon, kaya po ako nagpinag-aralan ko. At sa aking tingin, mayroon po, po tayong pangkukunan ng pera sa budget para po matugunan itong problema ng ating mga hospital. Halimbawa po, mayroon po sa budget na tinatawag na Miscellaneous Personal Benefit Fund or MPBF and the Pension and Gratuity Fund or PGF. Currently, MPBF allocation in the current budget amounts to 29.3 billion. I repeat, MPBF allocation for 2021, 29.3 billion. The allocation for the pension and gratuity fund in the current year's budget is 152.9 billion. The obligation data presented every year in the national expenditure program show that historically the MPBF and the PGF are not fully utilized. Ibig sabihin, hindi po ginagamit ang pundo doon. Ang laki ng appropriation, hindi po ginagamit. Ang uh, halimbawa po, in 2016, the MPBF obligation rate was only 28.91% and the pension and the gratuity fund obligation rate was only 69%. Ano po ang ibig sabihin nito? Noong 2017, sa MPBF po, bahigit sa 63 billion ang hindi ginamit. Noong 2017, 43 billion sa pension and gratuity fund hindi ginamit. And so forth and so on. Ang pinaka-importante po, sa 2020, mayroon pong savings sa MPBF na mahigit po sa 18 billion, 399 million, 414,000. Doon po naman sa uh, pension and gratuity fund, may savings na 17 billion 452 million 467 pesos and 600 608 uh, 608 pesos sa taong po ito 2021 abril na po tayo or mayo unutilized hindi po ginagamit sa MPBF 9 billion 519 billion 771,793 pesos. Sa pension and gratuity fund, 22 billion, 964 million, 628,280. Why are these logical sources of funding, Mr. President? Because in 2017, for example, the contingent fund budget was only 5.5 billion. But the total releases under the contingent fund exceeded 5.5 billion. The savings under the uh, pension and gratuity fund, amounting to 6 billion, was used to augment the fund. The report of the DBM for SARO releases for that year showed that the contingent fund was mainly, mainly used to provide additional intelligence fund for the AFP and the PNP, as well as to purchase helicopters for the PNP. Kung ang pension and gratuity fund ay binawasan para po sa intelligence funds at pambili ng helicopter, siguro naman 
mas matindi ang pangangailangan natin na ngayong pandemya at tama lang na gamitin natin ang pondo para sa mga hospital. Hindi po ba? Hindi po ginagastos. Maraki ang savings. E bakit hindi natin pagkukunin doon? Uh, that is why if we are able, if we are able, if Malacanang if the, if the, if is able to use the unutilized budget for intelligence funds to purchase a helicopter with more reason that we should use the unutilized funds to expand our hospital system because we are in a pandemic. We did an initial analysis of the figures and there is room to carve out from the MPBF and PGF to fund the proposed hospital bills. That is my submission, Mr. President, and in the period of amendment, I, I, have, I am prepared to amend and assign specific amounts to these hospitals so that it becomes a funded mandate. The people can look at this as not only for political purposes, but as real help. Uh, 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 and I would repeat, we can fund them from the free bank of Malacanang, which is the MPBF and the PGF, which are only real, realigned for intelligence funds and to buy military heli or police helicopters. That is our submission, Mr. President. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Minority, majority leader, Mr. perhaps President. we can, uh, as suggested, we can go into the period of amendments. Mr. President. Uh, uh, yes, Senator Go. Alam po, konti lang po ito, Mr. President. Uh, kung ano pong makakatulong, uh, Mr. President, the uh, Senate uh, Minority Leader, Sir Frank Cadrillon, we welcome it. As I have said, priority po natin ang funding sa health. Uh, we are uh, willing to accept uh, good the good senator's uh, suggestions po. No? Uh, just want to explain po about the yung pinatulog po. Uh, hindi po natin pinapatulog po ito. There, for example po, LGU resolution for Rosario District Hospital was issued just uh, two weeks ago. Before uh, filing uh, the committee report, we also consulted the uh, uh, with the authors of the bills, authors of the bill, with the DOH, with the DBM, and the required uh, and required the authors of the bills to submit the required documents for the House bills. Uh, for example, po LGU resolution, uh, napakatagal pong magbigay uh, nito at uh, alam naman natin na uh, uh, dapat. Bago natin dalahin dito sa floor ay kompleto na po ang itong mga requirements. Uh, and also, Mr. President, the Senate had to adapt as well as to the new uh, normal. A lot of our employees here in the Senate tested positive for COVID. We had to we had to uh, implement uh, lockdowns here. So many factors contributed to the time it took uh, to report uh, those uh, these uh, bills to plenary. And also, Mr. President, last year, uh, we also focused on COVID-19 bills, like establishing mandatory quarantine facilities, medical reserve corps, and others. Uh, also, Mr. President, and, uh, at ayaw rin natin magpasa, uh, pumunta rito sa plenary na marami pa pong mga requirements na hindi pa po nasumiti ang iba't ibang ahensya ng uh, gobyerno. At ulitin ko lang po, uh, Mr. President, uh, kay Bongo po, walang tulog po ang serbisyo. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, can I ask a question? Mr. President, can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. So, hindi po totoo, Senator Go, na pinapatagal ko po ito mga pagpasal, ito mga batas na ito. Dahil maliwanag na inero pa lang ay nasa tumiti na ng health kung, kung saan kayo po ang chairman at doon po tumagal ang panukalang batas Sinabi ko po kanina Mr. President that the minority leader and I and all of us just want to help our country sa gitna po tayo ng pandemya May tanong po ako May tanong po akong specific Sinabi niyo po nung nakaraang uh, ayaw ko na po sa nabuksan ito ngunit kayo po Mahaba ang manifestation nyo. In effect, sinisisi nyo pa rin tayo. 
Sinabi niyo po nung nakaraang session na bakit ko pa pinapatagal itong pagpasan nito mga panukalang batas. Napakita natin na sa record ay hindi po totoo yan. Dahil lang po natenga at doon nagpending sa komite, mahigit isang taon po itong mga bills na ito bago po dalhin sa plenaryo. Nasa pandemya po tayo, Mr. President, at ayaw po natin may masayang na oras. And I'm, I know you have a good heart to help our fellow Filipinos, Mr. President. Simple lang po ang tanong ko. Hindi totoo sa Senator Go na dinilay ko ito, na pinapatagal ko ito mga bills na ito. I'm referring po dun sa ating uh, apat na oras na uh, pag-debate, uh, Mr. Uh, Sinabi niyo po, sinabi niyo talaga, and pointing to me, you said that you pretend to support these bills, but in fact you do not. And you're saying, pinapatagal ko ang pagpasan nito mga panukalabotas. Hindi po totoo yan, hindi po ba? Now I am convinced, Mr. President, that you are willing to help uh, these uh, measures to be passed, Mr. President. Thank okay. you, Mr. President. Gentlemen, uh, yes. Uh, my proposal is for the majority leader to uh, go to the period of amendments. Yes, Mr. President, with the permission of our colleagues, uh, move to close the period of interpolation. So. All right, any objections? Hearing none, period of interpolation is closed.